Well, hello there, and welcome to the first episode of Banquet Stuff. In this series, I want to search for cheap electronics and kits on Banggood, order them and show you what I receive. I want to make clear that this video is not sponsored by Banggood and they also don't produce these kits. They only sell them, so please keep that in mind during the video. In this episode, I ordered something called a 16 Music 16 Soundbox Kit. But before I order, let's take a look at the reviews. I'll start with the positive reviews. RTC 017 wrote, This is a very good kit and value for money. Anto said that the kit is easy to assemble and works great. When assembling, play very close attention to the position of the diodes. He also stated the kit won't survive 9 volts. Now let's read some negative reviews. AA2LF wrote, Easy to put together, but without any instructions, it's useless. Reviewer K Tokyo wrote, Not recommended. Poor quality product, comes with cheap price, does not work, some parts not in the package. So is this kit easy to assemble and good for beginners, or did they just put some cheap parts together in a package without any instructions? Let's find out. So here it is. First, let's take a look at the contents. The package contains our kit, which is great. The kit seems to come with a product ID sticker and some instructions. But unfortunately, these instructions are not related to the kit at all. This sheet of paper seems really weird anyways. The bottom was torn off and the rest of it was just shipped with the kit for whatever reason. So let's store the instructions for later use and take a look at the electronics instead. My first impression of the PCB is very positive. It seems to be of high quality and the silk screen is rather nice and clear. All the labels can be read easily. Another thing that I noticed is that the pads are quite large, but not too large, so they are easy to solder. It also has a little slot cut out for the daughter board, which is a nice detail. One negative thing that I saw right away at the beginning was the packaging. The parts were not really protected at all. Unfortunately, most of these kits will be shipped like this, due to the low price. However, it's better to ship the ICs like this, stuck in a piece of foam so the pins can't bend. It doesn't have to be in a box like these two, but a little piece of foam would have made this kit so much nicer. However, back to the components. Other than the main PCB, there is a little daughter board in the kit. Besides these two components, the kit consists of four switches to select the sound a little pin header for external communication, a small speaker, an optional cap, three diodes, quite a few resistors, the two main ICs and sockets for them, which is a nice touch, and a transistor. Let's take a look at those ICs. I've linked the relevant datasheets in the description below. You can get all the information there. Now I will quickly assemble the kit. I will start with all the resistors. I think it's not that exciting to watch, so I cut the other resistors out. Next, solder the diodes in place. Just watch out for the correct orientation. You can see that there is one regular diode and two senior diodes in the kit. The top symbol on the silk screen shows the regular diode. It has a little white line on the right side to indicate that the cathode of the diode goes here. The diode itself has a silver ring on its body to indicate where the cathode is. If you place it in the wrong way, the kit won't work. So as you can see here, the cathode is at the right side here, towards the little slot for the daughter board. The same applies to the two smaller diodes. They have a small black ring to indicate the cathode, as you can see here. The cathode of both smaller diodes also point to the right hand side of the PCB, towards the slot. Now to the IC sockets. They are quite easy to install, just make sure that this little notch of the socket matches the notch on the silk screen. After they are placed, turn the PCB around and first tuck down one pin at each side of each socket to hold it in place. Then you can visually inspect the sockets and when they are flush on the surface of the PCB, finish the other solder joints of each socket. The next part is the single transistor. I bent the legs a bit to make it look nicer, but it should fit right in. Now to the pin header. 
This one is really easy. Just put it in and finish the solder job. The same applies to the speaker. However, there is one thing to note here. The speaker has a little plus on the top of its case. Match that up with the plus printed on the PCB. I decided to put in the switches next. They can be a bit tricky to align, but you can use the same method as above with the sockets. Place them on the PCB, tuck down one pin and then push them on the board with your finger while you heat up the solder joint. Then let it cool off a bit and release it. This way you can align them properly and they will look great at the end. After you did this, don't forget to finish the other solder joints. And now comes the hardest part, the daughter board. One top tip, it's actually better to do the daughter board before you solder the speaker in. Otherwise it's very hard to do the top solder joints of the daughter board. Unfortunately, I didn't think about that earlier. However, this is still quite tricky. First I tried to balance the two boards, so they stay in place while I solder them. But I ended up pushing the two boards against something, so they stay in place. Then I soldered the right hand side corner so they don't fall apart again and I finished all the other solder joints afterwards. Make sure you do both sides, top and bottom. When this is done, there is one last thing to do and that is to put in the ICs in their respective sockets. Make sure the legs of the IC are not bent and then push it in a little. Verify that everything looks right and then push it in completely until it fits nice and snug in the socket. And you're done! Now it's time to test it. Behold the mighty 16 sounds. Hmm, this is not good. It's clearly not working. So we have to troubleshoot this. Okay, so I found the problem. First, I tried to add that extra cap that came with the kit, as suggested on Banggood, but that didn't work. In the reviews, somebody suggested to connect these two pins to the daughter board with wires. So I did that as well. Let's give it another try. Great, it's just really loud, so yeah, that's all it can do. Okay, let's do a quick recap. The PCB and parts are really good quality, so that's a big plus for this kit. The pads are nice and large, so this is good for beginners from that point of view and it's relatively easy to solder. The only difficult thing here was the daughter board. On the other hand, it didn't work out of the box for me, but there is a chance that this kit was just bad, and I don't like the design with the daughter board. I think they could have made that nicer, for example with pin headers or something like that. There are absolutely no instructions included, which is a big no-no for a beginner's kit. You certainly need to know what you are doing to get this thing running, so it makes it harder for beginners and it was poorly packaged. So how would I rate that kit? Well, you have to remember that it cost me under 3 bucks with free shipping, so it's also a big plus, but I can't get over the fact that it didn't work out of the box, and it didn't have any instructions included, so that's why I gave it 3 stars. So if you know what you are doing, and you know how to assemble this, and for some reason you want this sound box, go ahead and buy it. The parts are good, the design could be better, but it's not terrible, and at the end it worked. If you liked this episode, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to suggest future kits. Have a wonderful day.